It's on everyone's list of things to do before you die. Or as one bloke pointed out, list of things you might be doing shortly before you die. I was in Bicycle, Alberta, on the western edge of Canada. A few weeks ago I was a civilian, but now I'm a reservist soldier on exercise on the British Army's largest training area. But that wasn't why I was here, in Bicycle. No, I was on R&R for a week and I excitedly volunteered to learn to skydive. Shortly after we had arrived, we were reminded of our comrade's earlier comment. We looked into the sky to see a scrumpled up bedsheet spinning while plummeting to the ground. We watched on in horror. Fortunately, within seconds, the individual had cut away from their malfunctioning parachute and deployed their reserve. Did I still want to skydive? The answer was a resounding, um, yeah, I suppose. After what seemed like a very short bit of ground training, I was ready to go. But it was too windy. We waited. The confidence I'd built during the training, which started to seem less and less comprehensive, was shattered when we got the call. The wind had dropped. We were off. After several nervous trips to the little skydiver's room, I donned my slightly too small red jumpsuit and strapped on my parachute. I then heard the Cessna 206 splutter into life. I waddled towards it in my group of five. As we got to the plane, the instructor pointed at us. Fifth, fourth, third, second, first. He was pointing at me to go first. I did my best not to look nervous. It wasn't working. We squashed into the tiny plane, me closest to the big, almost garage door-like opening in the side. Then the engine revved. The little plane took off down the grass runway and leapt into the air with all the grace of a paper kite piloted by a five-year-old. Small planes are not as comfy as their continent-crossing brethren. I had five or ten minutes to enjoy the view. It was quite nice until I noticed the low fuel light flashing on the dash and that the pilot was wearing a parachute too. Suddenly, 80 mile an hour winds were buffeting my face. I curled up not knowing, or maybe not wanting to know, what was happening. The door was open. The instructor beckoned me to get out. The training took over. I pushed my foot out into the slipstream, onto the landing gear, then using my arms, shuffled to the end of the wing strut. I looked over to the instructor, who shouted in a thick Canadian accent, Are you ready to skydive? I nodded and let go of the plane. In an instant I was below the canopy, my heart pounding, trying to remember what to do. My parachute lines were twisted, I swore, a lot. Within a few moments, however, I was free, controlling my canopy to the ground. I didn't like it. I was cold. My eyes were streaming from the wind, and I suddenly felt very uncomfortable suspended under a bit of silk three and a half thousand feet up. After what seemed like an age, the ground began to rush up at me. I flared the parachute and braced to pile into the ground at a vast rate of knots, but no, it was gentle, like stepping off the doorstep. It was bizarre. I'd been so nervous prior to the jump. I hadn't enjoyed the jump at all, or the descent. But when my trainers touched down in that canola field, it was all gone. I was elated. Skydiving was the best thing ever. Within the hour I was back up there, but this time I enjoyed every moment.